Uh, and thank you everyone for joining us for a virtual career day series. Uh, my name is Josh Walker. I'm an architect coming to you live from my home because like you, we're all living, learning and working from home uh, these days. If this is your first time joining us, this is our effort at HKS to introduce you to the many kinds of professionals that it takes to make one of the largest architecture firms in the world run. We design everything from stadiums to skyscrapers, hotels, hospitals, schools, and everything in between. It takes over a thousand of us to make this shit happen. Uh, architects, accountants, interior designers, engineers, human resources, researchers, and everything in between. There's a place and a role for everyone. So far, we've talked with sustainability engineer Mike Brown, director of justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion, Giselle Santos Rivera, an architect at ASA Today. You can find all of these on our YouTube or our Instagram TV feed here. Uh, this week, I have the pleasure of introducing uh, one of my personal teammates, Director of Education Interiors, Adelia Schleiss. Thanks for joining us, Adelia. Thank you. So I've been starting every video with the same question, uh, and I'm curious to hear your answer. If you could go back to your high school days, how did you envision your career? So interesting. So I, I moved around quite a bit growing up. Um, I had the privilege of experiencing new cultures, new perspectives, observing everything I could and taking it all in uh, around me. I never quite fit into any real mold. And as people started talking about what to do, what to do um, in their futures, my curiosity was driven by both science and the art. So I struggled to find something that was equally compelling, that I was really passionate about the sort of notion of um, a human-centered approach um, in a very creative way. So I really started looking into um, psychology. So I obtained my first career um, in psychology, focused on neuropsychology research, um, worked several years with children with ASD. So I was very passionate about enhancing physical environments um, for those with diverse needs. Um, so it was an interesting path for me because it started off in psychology, which then led later in life um, to interior design. Interesting. And how did you find interior design from psychology? So it's interesting because oftentimes people will ask, you know, how, what made you make the shift? So in, to me, it wasn't so much as a switch as it was an enhancement. It was how can I take what I know and what um, I can continue to learn um, and approach and have this design for um, passion and take it to another level of impact. And to me, that was an easy, an easy swing um, on the environments that we live in. We spend over 90% of our time indoors. And to me, that was a way to make a true critical impact um, on the way that we experience our spaces and our places. Fascinating. An, in, an interesting segue to take an existing knowledge base and uh, expertise and bring it to a new career. That's really fascinating. Uh, and so last week, we had an architect on here, and she described the space much the same way you do, a creative exercise balancing different uh, skill sets. And so I'm interested to talk with you about a question that we got last week with referred to interior architecture. Now I know the state recognizes two trades, interior design and architecture, both licensed and registered professions. Uh, and we at HKS work hand in hand with both. So I'm interested in how you would describe the difference between the uh, professions and how they overlap. So I'll speak from a standpoint of um, what interior design is. Um, so interior designers, you know, are, are an essential part of the collaborative team of, of the built environment, right? Um, qualified interior designers are formally trained. Uh, they graduate from an accredited program. There's um, a formality to entering into those programs. And then also to become a registered interior designer, there are a series of examinations that you would then take uh, to become licensed. So there is a formality to that, but I think in general, what I would say is if you find a program and you find a passion and you find a career in which you thrive, um, it really is based on your interest and what you're passionate about and what you can really get from that career path. Um, so I sort of attribute it to, you know, there's, there's this mountain, right? And there's our future self up here. Um, and there's many different paths to get there. So I encourage, I encourage individuals to really look at what it is that the program um, 
has and has to offer, and then how you really make it your own. You can pave your own way uh, through your entire career. And you may make a little shifts along the way, which is totally okay. Don't just stay in your lane. Um, feel free to explore. Um, so there are, there are some differences, but really it's all, all things design, right? Um, it's just a different approach, a different focus, and perhaps a different expertise. Okay. So for people who are trying to get a handle on what all is encompassed with the practice of interior design, um, I know we see HGTV, and I've watched more than my fair share of it. Uh, you know, and now we're all stuck at home, and I imagine people are watching more TV than ever. Uh, and there are a lot of design shows that feature interior designers and quick change renovations and swapping out light fixtures and turning into this whole new space. Uh, and I'm curious what your take is on is interior design what we see on HGTV, or is there more to it, or is there something maybe people don't see? Well, I would say HGTV is, is a television um, series and show, so we, we don't quite see what's behind the closed doors, and there's certainly a significant business aspect behind the practice of interior design. Um, it's not all um, the result, which is what we see, which is great, but also um, a, a good point would be there's residential design, there's commercial design, there's a vast variety of types of designs and building types and project types. Um, and it really depends on your interests. You could be more in tune to the lighting design of the space. Um, there are many different facets to the interior design, uh, especially in commercial design. There are building codes, regulations that we have to be very um, understanding. Um, and I would say you know, qualified in interior designers continue to work with all those parameters and with a larger team. Um, so it really is depending on your interests and, and your uh, path forward. Uh, but really, when it comes down to it, it's about the health, safety, and wellness. It's really critical for a successful interior design uh, in general. Absolutely. And that mirrors what we talked about with architecture last week, uh, highlighting the collaboration between the professions. Uh, another last pair of questions, and this is about the point where I would encourage our guests to submit questions if you have any. Uh, we would love to answer those uh, as soon as we get done with these. Uh, what does it take to become an interior designer? Uh, what are the technical steps required to, to follow in your trade? So I would say, and I, I mentioned briefly, but um, you would go to an accredited program. Uh, and I would look at, you know, which one is appropriate for you. And um, I would look at um, what your interests are, but also allow yourself to not have to decide early on. So once you get into the program, complete the program, um, look for the, the place that most is of most interest. It could be a big design firm or maybe a small design firm, but I would encourage uh, experimentation and trying a few different things before you settle into one sort of path. Um, and also an important key to it is it's hard. It's, it's a lot of work. It's meeting a budget. It's working with all of, all of our stewards of community, um, working with different clients, client types, project types, there's codes, regulations, um, all the way down to the detail. But uh, again, I would encourage you to, you have to have rigor, passion, uh, strong sensibility for creativity and science because they're equally balanced. Uh, we often talk about outcome-driven design and designing with science-based evidence and applied research. So that's really important um, to really understand uh, the science of human nature. And I would also say continue to investigate, um, investigate ways that the built environment can be um, designed positively to influence, you know, our comfort and behavior in our learning environments. Um, design should enhance the experience of our overall quality of life. So you really have to have passion in it because it is very challenging at times. It is very difficult. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not what you see on TV. It, there's a, a lot of rigor that is probably happening behind the scenes. Um, I think I talked with Adese last week that some of the most intense energy you spend on a project is the stuff people won't notice. Right. Um, I think that's very true in, in many design professions. I know that we like to sweat over the details on the EDU team. Right. 
Well, you, you followed up on my, uh, well, it takes to be good at the job question already. So I appreciate that. Saved us a little time and opened up an opportunity to talk about uh, the presentations and the various uh, com conversations you get to have with the public and the research. Um, and particularly, that's what uh, I see a question submitted about with uh, regarding South by Southwest, which if you don't know, is this huge conference festival type uh, phenomenon that happens in Austin every year. A lot of research projects, a lot of interesting human interest uh, re right. Re presentations, and Adelia was featured prominently in some of our research there. So can you just take a minute to describe what, we're, what we were doing and what you uh, got out of that experience? Absolutely. Um, so I'm very passionate about um, designing for diverse learners um, and uh, those with different sensory needs, right? And so we went last year and we uh, showcased a cocoon, uh, which is based on our sensory well-being hub. So really designing for a population of um, atypical um, and ASD, ASD students, um, all, all people really. And it was a way to create a sensory well-being hub that people can engage in environment in a different way. So we took this little two um, cocoon is what we called it, a cocoon 2.0, and it really created a smaller uh, environment that's sort of a micro environment that's a tunable space. So some people have an aversion to, you know, water or um, there's certain sensory needs that we can accommodate and modify within that mini environment, which is really compelling. Um, there was a digital screen in the in the front that had di different nature scenes, so you could select the different tone, the coloration of your lighting. Acoustics was taken into consideration to create a space that was more welcoming and calming. Um, so we brought that to South by South by Southwest last year, um, and it showcased very well. And we had a lot of great conversations and really compelling conversations with different communities, education. Um, folks and facilitators, uh, teachers, and even students. So it was a very compelling um, experience. And I very much look forward to the outcome of that research. I know we're constantly evolving uh, our designs and the implementation of them in various schools. So I appreciate uh, getting to see how that research starts and presents, and uh, we look forward to where it will go. Uh, that is... However, the coming up on the very end of our time today, so I want to say thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Don't forget to follow this account for another interview next week. We'll be talking with architectural photographer Daryl Shields about his career and what role photography plays in the profession. And I'm going to ask you to do something new this week. Uh, if you think interior design might be something that interests you or you know someone who's a good fit, I want you to go to our website, HKS Inc. That's hksinc.com and uh, go to the What We Do tab at the top. Uh, pick a project sector that you seem interested in and uh, spend some time clicking through the projects there and looking at the renderings and the photos uh, of our in spaces, particularly interiors. And take note of how many of them are interiors because we spend 90% of our time indoors and we pay a lot of attention to what that experience is gonna be like. So celebrate that. And uh, then come back next week to learn from Daryl about the taking of those photographs, the presentation of our work, and what role uh, helps make them look so great. Uh, so again, that's the same time next Tuesday to learn about the art of taking those photographs. And remember, this video will go live on Instagram TV soon. You can share that with friends and teachers. Uh, if you have follow-up questions, you can comment on the video, and we'll do our best to get back to you. Thanks again, everybody. Stay safe. And thanks again, Adelia. Thank you all.